The events of the series begin with Barath, who is late for his graduation ceremony in London. When he arrives at the university, the principal hands him a graduation certificate, and with his colleagues, they celebrate and dance. He goes home and is shocked when his uncle tells him that he has got a call from India that his father had a stroke which caused his death in the hospital. Upon hearing the news, Barath feels extremely sad. And on his way back to India, he gets flashes of his childhood. His mother would take care of him and tell him bedtime stories. One afternoon, he got back from school, and she knew that he had eaten ice cream even though the doctor didn't allow him to do so. He told her that he ate it with his friend, Subash. She asked him to promise her that he wouldn't do that again. At the time, his father Raghava was busy establishing a political party with his friend Veradara. One night, Raghava told his wife that he regrets not spending quality time with his son Bharath because his work took up most of his time and that he couldn't care about her as much. She replied reassuring him that she keeps everything in control. The next day, Bharath apologized to his mother saying that he couldn't keep his promise. He had an ice cream. She showed him her disappointment and that he had to stick to his word. In the morning when he was up to wake her from her sleep, she was unresponsive. He discovered that his beloved mother had died. The funeral ceremony began, and the child seemed astonished by what was happening. It was beyond his understanding. The father took full responsibility for looking after Varath. At the same time, his friend Veradera reminded him that he should focus on his work in the party because the elections were coming soon. Raghava replied that he couldn't leave his son alone, especially since he was still a little kid who needed care and affection. His friend suggested a second marriage, in which his wife would take care of Varath and the household as well. The father got married, but his wife neglected Bharath and didn't give him the care he needed. She was unable to give him the motherly love that he lost, especially since she had given birth to a child. Bharath hated his life intensely. He started spending most of his time at Subash's home. It went further that he started spending the nights at his home. Bharath learned that they would travel to London for his father's work. He asked Subash's father to let him carry his education with his friend, and when Raghava learned about that, he asked his son if it was okay for him to stay away from his family. Barath replied that he'd love to spend more time with his friend. Barath came back from sailing in the intense waves of memories. Those were his last memories with his father, and now he's going back to his lands. He arrives at his home and finds his father's pictures on the wall. He also finds his stepmother mourning over her husband's death. Veradera tells him that his father got severe asthma fits and died in the hospital. They were going to wait until the eldest son, Barath, comes to carry out the burial rituals. But because of the people's rage over the death of their leader and their intense grief over him, they accelerated the procedures and buried him before he came. Barath asks him who carry out the burial ceremony and he tells him that they have put his little brother in charge on his behalf. And for the first time, Barath gets to know his brother. The news shows that the country is mourning the deceased man who was the former Prime Minister of India. They wonder who will take his place. At this time, his stepmother's assistant comes in. Barath asks her about his brother. She says that he stopped talking. More than one doctor checked him and all of them said that he doesn't suffer from any disease. It could be the shock of losing his father. The next day, Barath takes a car tour of the city. He is surprised by the non-compliance with traffic regulations in the streets. He gets upset over the congestion on the roads and how bikers ride on the sidewalks. In another twist of the plot, the race to run for the position of prime minister has become intense and fast-paced. Damu meets Veradera and asks his permission to run for the position of Prime Minister after learning that he doesn't want to put forward his name. And a member of Parliament speaks with him to take him into his consideration. But Veradera doesn't give promises to anyone. Not yet. At the funeral, most businessmen and ministers come to attend the last funeral ceremony. When Veradera presents Varath to the public. And at night, 
As Bereth prepares his travel baggage to return to London, his father's friend tells him that he has cancelled his flight. He wants him to run for the position of Prime Minister, because he is suitable and he would like him to achieve his father's dream. Bereth is speechless. How can he run a country which he knows not that much about? He has been here only since two weeks ago. Veradara says that he won't be alone. He'll stand by him and show him the roadmap. He tells him that all the ministers and members of parliament want to take this position. Barath asks him why he doesn't run for this position. He replies that the agreement between him and his father was for him to take care of the party, whereas his father takes care of the government. He gives him a chance until the next day to think thoroughly. He looks at the picture of his father hanging on the wall and is confused by the decision he should take, the decision that will change his lifestyle forever. On the next day, Barath made up his mind. He decided to run for the position of prime minister, and in the assembly of ministers, he gives his speech and takes the oath of the prime minister. He signs the appointment document. Then he meets with his personal secretary, Vaskar who was his father's assistant as well. Baraf asks him to read the newspaper headlines to him. Baskar reads the headlines which talk about the youngest prime minister in India. When he reaches the opposition newspapers, he avoids reading them. But under Baraf's demand, he reads what they say that the new prime minister doesn't know how to take the oath. Upon hearing the opposition opinion, Baraf gets upset. He decides to take his car and finds a security official whose name is Mukhtar. The new prime minister gets a car tour in a convoy. Arath notices that the roads are empty, and when he asks Baskar, he replies that a protocol has been implemented. Thus, the traffic has been blocked for him to cross. He arrives at the office, where he finds Shrivet, his office manager, with his assistants. He holds a meeting and tells them that he will need their help at first, because he doesn't know as much about his duties. When he sees the shock on their faces, he tells them that they shouldn't worry because he is a fast learner. Shrivet tells him that he has scheduled his first meeting tomorrow, but Bareth insists on meeting, expeditiously, with the traffic officer. Haram, the traffic inspector, has been summoned to meet with Bareth, who questions about the chaos and lack of order in the traffic situation. Haram replies that he knows everything, but because of the density of the population, they cannot control it properly. Varath asks about the fines in the case of traffic violations, and when he learns what the fines are, he doubles them for the residents to learn not to violate the law. When he asks Shrivet to implement the new regulations, he replies that they must look into these laws and seek the opinion of the ministers before circulating them among the people. Varath gets furious upon hearing his assistant's suggestion. He tells him that if the people feel the responsibility, they will abide by the rules. Traffic officers activate the new rules that send the citizens into a shocking trance. All channels and media outlets talk about the implementation of the new traffic regulations and the fines imposed on the violators. And the public say on the matter is divided into two parts. Some of them believe that the fine exceeds their month-to-month -month paychecks and salaries. Others support these fines for the people to be obedient and avoid violations. The next day, Barath visits his father's friend and finds Shrivet, his assistant, there. He must, first and foremost, deliver the news to him. Veradara asks him about his first working day as a prime minister. He responds that he isn't satisfied because of the age gap. He finds it difficult to deal with his team. He would rather prefer a team in his age range. Veradara replies that his team consists of experienced and shrewd people whom he must discuss before carrying out or updating any plan. Varath responds that he is sure that what he did was the right thing and that he doesn't need to consult anyone else. The next day, while they were in the car, Varath asks his assistant about people's opinions. He replies that they're worried about the potential dictatorship of the new prime minister. Their conversation is ongoing while Bareth notices a gorgeous girl at a bus stop, chatting happily with her friends. When he arrives, he finds a gathering of journalists in front of his office, demanding a statement about the new laws related to traffic violations. 
He approaches the opposition journalist, and there he insinuates that they talked against him. Now his decision will be in accord with his conscience. The next day, his convoy follows the same route and finds the girl there. He tells his assistant that he admires her. Now, let's go to the girl's side. Vasu, an officer's daughter who's studying business administration. She is with her friends who are talking about the young handsome prime minister and how they wish to marry a man as good looking as him and his stature as well. They ask her if the Prime Minister approaches her, what will she do? She responds that this is next to impossible. At this moment, the phone rings and one of Vasu's friends responds, and on the other end, Bharath himself is speaking. He says that he wants to talk to Vasu. The girl, not knowing that the Prime Minister is talking, says that he has to stop the harassment, and she hangs up on him. He calls again, and another girl answers, Thinking that he is her friend, she insults him and hangs up the phone in his face once again. Bharath asks his assistant why these girls don't believe that the Prime Minister is the one who's speaking on the phone. His assistant replies that they're right. How can they believe such a thing? Bharath calls for the third time. This time, Vasu picks the call. And she doesn't believe him when he says that he is the Prime Minister. He asks her to look for his office number in the phone number's directory, then calls his office. He'll respond to her. The girls search for his number. Then Vasu calls and is surprised that he is indeed the Prime Minister himself. Varak tells her that he wants to meet her. He invites her over for a meal. Vasu cannot believe what is happening and waits until her father returns from work. The next day, Varath makes a reservation at a luxury restaurant and waits there. Vasu arrives with her friends. He becomes attached when he sees her. She sits in front of him. He asks her about herself and her studies. She seems out of sorts and still cannot believe what is happening to her. To break the ice, he asks her to speak in the same spontaneous manner that he saw her at the bus stop. She expresses her happiness for the new laws he issued regarding traffic violations. She suggests that he repair the roads with the money collected from the fines. He likes her positive approach and problem-solving mindset that she has. At this time, Baskar reminds him that the assembly meeting time is approaching. He knows that he is late, so he leaves Vasu for his duty and commitments. Upon his arrival, the president of the council warmly welcomes him. The session begins and the head of the opposition party starts his speech. He says that his decision is harsh on the public. Another minister opposing him stands up, and the voices of the two rise as if they are quarreling. Bharath observes the situation and becomes astonished at the barbaric manner that's taken in such a setting where decisions are made regarding the country and people. Bharath stands and says that he has made these changes in the traffic system so that if everyone adheres to them, there won't be any fine to pay. He says that because of their behavior while driving, they get into traffic accidents, and the common people always blame the government for their own mistakes and irresponsibility. He continues by saying that he was raised in a responsible society, but when he came to his country, he didn't find any of that, but rather he found the opposite, indifference, recklessness, and lack of concern for the lives of others, let alone their own lives. Here, one of the attendees stands up and says that he is transgressing against the people and wronging them with his words. Barath becomes disturbed by his comment. He says that anyone who violates the rules which he introduced in the regulations will be held accountable for their actions and will be a lesson for others. After that, he leaves the council. Barath begins with government employees. He goes to their offices. He marks their punctuality and attendance times, who adheres to them, and who neglects. The employees are taken aback by his presence among them. But after those unexpected visits, their performance and attendance times improved. Then he goes to the local residential areas. He sees the bad conditions they're living in. Barath puts those responsible for such negligence under his scrutinizing lenses. After a while, he gets his new palace and he plans for new projects throughout the country and holds a council meeting. He tells them that he will fight corruption 
and will hold all those responsible for state funds accountable, as the people have the right to know where the state's money goes. After that, he goes to the police stations, and there he notices that the cameras aren't installed correctly. He asks to correct them to protect the state, individuals, and the government. He holds a meeting for new officers. He says that he will replace and appoint officers based on their ability to solve problems. Barath works till late at night to solve the problems of the people. At the same time, the news and television channels broadcast news about the opposition leader and businessman, Manohar, who is accused of corruption and seizure of 800 acres of state's lands illegally. Parath orders an officer named Arvind, who works at the Criminal Investigations Department, to investigate Manohar's case that concerns people, but he must be fair and decisive in his judgment. The news channels spread the news that the Prime Minister ordered an investigation of the whole matter. And because of his decision, there was turmoil in all political parties in the country. During the night, Barath gets a call that his brother has become sick and has been transferred to the hospital. He reaches there and asks his stepmother to rest at home, because he will stay with his brother. She is amazed at the extent of his compassion for his brother, which he didn't find in her when he was a child. After which he sits with his brother. He tells him about his father's life, which he knew was important. Unfortunately, he recognized this after his passing. After that, Vardera checks on Barath. Before leaving, he tells him that he is proud of his decision to appoint him as Prime Minister. Then he tells him to postpone his decision regarding some positions such as the Minister of Finance and the Superintendent of Police, and the Commissioner responsible for criminal investigations. But Barath opposes him by saying that these are government positions and have nothing to do with his party. Fardera tells him that he used to make such decisions with his father, but Barath is determined in his stance. The man leads him, not knowing how to solve this problem with him. Back in time, he didn't know that by appointing him to the position of Prime Minister, he had planted a thorn in his back. The next day, Barath visits his brother at home. He becomes surprised when he sees him talking and asks him to stay by his side. Then he tells his stepmother that her son is well and recovered from the shock he went through after their father's death. The next day, Barath holds his first ministerial meeting and talks about the education issues. He believes that the percentage of students who apply for school admissions is marginal. What deepens his disappointment is when the Minister of Education says that they should close all government schools and focus only on private schools. Varaf orders an investigation into all private schools, including the Minister of Education's school, which is considered the largest private school in the country. From now on, they'll focus on government schools and make English the primary language there. The government begins to close private schools, and when researching the opinion of the public, they learn that they support this decision which removes the burden of their fees off their shoulders. Vaju learns of his decisions and supports him. She asks her father about his opinion of the Prime Minister's personality, who says that he, like any official, cannot be trusted. The next day, Barath visits the school research team. He finds Vasu as a member of the team, which is quite pleasing. He feels a bit of confusion in the beginning, but then he confidently commences a discussion about other countries' methods of education. On another side, Officer Arvin visits the son of the opposition leader, Manohar. He informs him that they have begun an official investigation into the illegal properties that belong to the state, and that he isn't allowed to travel without an official permission. But Manohar puts a smile on his face. He remains silent, as he's enjoying a comedy act in front of him. During the evening, Vardura goes to Arvin's office and asks him about the updates in Manohar's case. He replies that he has collected important evidence and the ruling will be issued at the council session. He orders him to stop the investigation and close the case, but Arvind refuses. Vardara gets angry and slaps him in the face. He threatens him with his family if he doesn't close the case. After that, the news of Manohar's innocence comes on the news. But people don't believe that. They comment that this is what happens when the issue is related to an influential person. No one can harm them. 
Vardara calls Bereth to invite him to a dinner party. When he gets there, he sees all the party members, officials, and members of the opposition party present. Everyone blames him, saying that they should watch each other's back and watch over their common interests. He must not jeopardize the reputation of political leaders and members of the council or expose them to any sort of harm. Vardara advises him that the people will eventually forget him and look to the next leader in line. He must follow their code of corruption. Manohar comes from behind and tries punching him on his shoulder, but Bareth is already irate deep down. He couldn't take it anymore. He pulls his hands forward and throws him upside down onto the table breaking it into pieces of glass scattered everywhere. Everyone stands ready. Bareth tells them that he will follow his mother's advice. Plus, he will fulfill the oath he gave to the people. He promises that he will change the entire regime completely. After that, he leaves the place. The next day, he is in his office doing his duties. His assistant, Vaskar, tells him that a group of young men want to meet him from several days ago. He agrees to meet them. Ramana speaks on behalf of the group, saying that Manohar will run for his father's seat in the elections. They couldn't take the relieving sigh that they had gotten rid of the father's injustice, and now his son comes to them, and God knows what corruption he will spread in the country. Barath suggests that Ramana should run for the position, who responds by saying that anyone who runs for such seats will be killed. News channels and media outlets are broadcasting Prime Minister Barath's support for Ramana's nomination for this position. As for Ramana, he goes to the village people and convinces them to vote for him. Damu and his son visit Veradera, who tells him that his father used to deal with anyone who came in his way without much noise. He must follow his steps, otherwise he won't be able to win the village elections, and Damu with his men attacks everyone who supports or votes for Ramana, who becomes worried. The villagers advise him to withdraw from the elections and leave for the city. He should apply for a job there and forget about their issues. But Ramana refuses and becomes resolute in his position. At the same time, Barath asks Mukhtar for ten men from the police, but they must be strong enough to protect Ramana without him even realizing it. One night, Damu's men try to kill Ramana, but the undercover police protect him and kill them one by one. The next day, Damu learns that his men have been killed, so he calls the police to arrest Ramana. The police arrest him, and while they're on their way, Ramana says that this isn't the way to the police station. The police car stops in the desert when Bareth descends from a helicopter. Ramana stands in front of Damu and his son. They marvel at his courageous stance before them, but behind him appears Bareth. He tells them that Ramana is under his protection, and if any harm happens to him, he will be responsible for it. Then he will not have mercy on him. Varath turns his back to leave when Damu says that he is now still alive in one piece because he came with his guards. Otherwise, his men would have cut him into pieces. Here Barath asks Mukhtar and his men to leave him for ten minutes with Damu and his men to see what he can do. Mukhtar refuses but Barat is determined. He orders that none of them enter after that. He stands defenseless in front of Damu's men with his forearms in front of his chest in a challenging stance. It seems that the young prime minister has great fighting skills. When Damu sends his first man who looks like steel, Barath stops him with his fist. The man falls to the ground. Everyone is shocked by Barath's strength and his combating geniuses. Barath gets rid of them one by one without even creating any wrinkles on his clean white shirt. In the end, Damu's son comes with a knife, wanting to attack, but Damu slaps him in the face, saying that he won't be able to defeat this man. Did he not see how he defeated all those beasts? He then apologizes to Barath and says that he won't approach Ramana again, and that he will let the elections proceed as normal. Barath demands that he had to inform all the ministers about what happened here because he doesn't want to repeat the scene with every minister. After that, Mukhtar suggests that they spend their night in the village, as the weather conditions are volatile, and it doesn't seem good to travel by plane. 
Meanwhile, the villagers gather in front of their dwelling. They want to meet Barath and thank him for standing by their side against injustice and corruption. They ask him to participate in one of their rituals in worship. Barath agrees. And the next day, he sings, dances, and eats with the simple and pure hearts of the villagers. He takes a tour of all the neighboring villages. He learns about the nagging problems of the people, the most prominent of which is the problem of the doctors who do not practice medicine sincerely. After that, he looks at the schools and becomes pleased that the education system has improved a lot from the past. He takes rounds and looks at the health units, then the agricultural units in which village people work. He mentions in the assembly the problems of the people of the village. After that, he decides to allocate 50 million Indian rupees per village annually for the people of each village. But no one present in the council agrees with his decisions. They begin to withdraw one by one. News of the council's decisions appears on television channels and the media. And that reaches the villagers, who greatly become happy with these decisions. In another place, the party members and ministers meet with Veradera to solve the Bharath problem. If all the lingering problems existing in the country are solved, there will be no use for their existence. They should resign. Veradera tells them that it's not wise to remove Bharath from his position after the people loved him. However, they may have a way out, which is to investigate his past mistakes, from which they can fabricate a scandal against him. On his personal affairs, Bharath declares his love for Vasu. He asks her for marriage, which sends her up to the moon. A singing and dancing trip together. And Varadara learns from Shrivad about Bharath's relationship with Vasu. He asks him to publish their pictures in all the newspapers. This becomes the headline news in the media. Upon which, Vasu's father feels ashamed when pictures of his daughter become rampant. He finds journalists in front of his house and gets rid of them with difficulty. When he sees Vasu, he scolds her for what she's done. He says that he lived his life honorably and didn't get involved with any filth, and now because of her, his name, Badly, has spread throughout the country. Varath becomes disturbed by people's talk about him. He submits his resignation from his duties as Prime Minister and leaves his seat empty for Veradera to pounce on. At the same time, he learns that Vasu and her father intend to travel far away. He searches for her and finds her at the train station. There he tells her father that he loves his daughter very much and wants to marry her. But the father refuses, telling him that he must leave them. Here, Barath tells Vasu that he loves her and that he will wait for her all his life. After that, he decides to hold a press conference. One of the journalists asks him about his relationship with Vasu. He gets angry and says that first he has to deliver his speech and then he will leave them room for their questions. He reminds them of the achievements he made for them and all the sacrifices he made. They forgot all of that and put it aside. Instead, they focused on a girl from among them. They insulted and ruined her reputation. Then he confesses his love for her in front of all the people. Vashu is the only one who compensates him for his mother's love, and she encouraged him in his work and the reforms he carried out in the country. He was over the moon when she was with him. Dharath reprimands the journalist who spoke ill about her reputation, and everyone remains silent, feeling remorse. The next day, the residents go out and hold demonstrations to get Bharath back to his position as Prime Minister of India. The ministers and representatives are terrified for their seats, so they go to Veradara and ask him to resign and return Bharath to his position. At the same time, Arvind goes to Bharath and apologizes to him, saying that he is not as trustworthy as he should be. Yet he tells him that he has collected sufficient incriminating evidence informally. He says that the journalist who had handled the case before him was Mithra, and he has all the evidence and information that will bring council members into serious interrogation. He says that Mithra is currently hiding in a village. What is most important is that the reason behind his father Raghava's death is a mysterious secret. Bharath heads out to the village with Mukkar. 
He meets Mithra who tells him that he had spoken to his father before his death. He told him that Veradera was his lifelong companion and partner in all the lands and money stolen from the state, and that he was behind all the corrupt operations carried out by ministers. He gave Raghava the documents that prove his claims, who, afterward, died mysteriously. They burned his body and carried out the burial rituals with unbelievable speed. After that, he suspected that his death wasn't because of any kind of illness, but rather a murder. Mithra hands Bereth a flash device that has all the documents and evidence that incriminate Veradara. Bharath walks, absent-mindedly, worried about what he just has heard. Meanwhile, someone shoots him, but instead, the bullet hits Mukhtar in his arm. Bharath quickly attempts to take him to the nearest hospital, but on the way, he faces cars with armed men. He tries to elude them, but in the end, he gets out to fight them. And as if additional strength has entered his body, he beats them all and gets rid of them. One of the men tells him that they don't know anything, but are only receiving orders. Thirath agrees with him to call the rest of the men and bring them to him. Indeed, the man does what he is asked to do. He takes the rest of the men in the ambulance and leaves. Parath waits. But when he sees the coming men in large numbers, he becomes a bit tense. However, the villagers gather behind him and come to fight Veradera's men. And they get rid of them. They become overjoyed that they manage to bring their favorite man back to his home. In a short while, Barath goes to Veradera. He asks him the truth about his father's death. He tells him that his father wanted to put him in jail, upon which he cooperated with a doctor to inject him with poison instead of his treatment at the last time. The poison spread throughout his body and paralyzed his hands and feet, and he couldn't speak afterward. He got completely ill and was admitted to the hospital. Veradera went to him in the hospital and told him that he was the reason behind everything that had happened to him lately. And there, he injected him with a dose of poison that killed him. Upon hearing the death of his father, Barath's eyes become full of tears. He says that people should know his truth and the mask he wears on his evil face. But Veradera tricks him to have mercy on him. Perhaps this has brought him some benefit because Barath tells him to choose his fate. He shoots himself dead. As for Varath, he regains his title as the Prime Minister of India. In a purging operation, he orders the arrest of the corrupted members of the council and the party. After that, with his stepmother and brother, Barath goes to Vasu's house to ask for her hand in marriage. And this is the happy news that wraps up our recap for today. Dear viewer, please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section with hashtag cinema recap. Stay tuned for the next recap video.